Uh, in this video I will speak about things which are not material, which are um, actually happening in the, at the invisible level, but which are very real for Bom Jones followers. Uh, and I would never speak about these things. I, as you see, I hardly argument with spiritual, um, invisible things when I speak about why is Bom John dangerous, because I consider them too individual and each of us has a different... These are things which cannot be proved by the public. So um, I am very careful with using spiritual arguments or visions and sounds and voices as an argument or dreams. Uh, if, if I do, then I warn uh, the people who listen to me, this is my perception, this is my dream, this is my vision, don't take it uh, 100%, they take it like one option. But uh, I decided to share many secrets because Bom John is starting to go big, Bom John is starting his uh, to fulfill his plan to overtake the world. I know it, it, sounds, uh, it sounds unbelievable and it sounds uh, conspiratory and everything, but we have his announcement uh, directly. He told Sushil Koirala, who endorsed him, that he is going to the world and he's going to establish a new world order. He's just waiting for his time. And his time is coming near because uh, humanity is... He, humanity, humanity got a blow, a big blow, uh, by this epidemic, pandemic actually. There will be other things which will confuse people, which will weaken the structures that we are in, and then Bom Joon is planning to come and make himself uh, the president of the universe, <laughs> make himself the only God. Uh, he says he is God. He says he is the only God and the highest God to be worshipped. I know for some of you this reminds of something, but I'm not going to speak about that thing. Uh, let's speak about the visions, the dreams and voices that Bom John's followers are having and which is the main reason that they actually believe him. Because otherwise, when you just meet Bom John physically, uh, Andrea Good, my former follower friend, who became my enemy by now, and me, uh, we agreed in one thing when we arrived to Nepal that Bon John on these, all these photos and videos, he looks so beautiful, he looks so etheric, he looks so even white, in, even so high. And then when you meet him personally, he's a dark skin. I, I don't have anything against dark skin, but why is this discrepancy? I love dark skin actually. That's why I went to Nepal and India. I like those people, they look to me beautiful, or Israel. But uh, why is this discrepancy that he's shown in the photos and videos as a fair-skinned, nearly European-looking person? When you meet him, he's short, he's shorter than me, and I am 160 centimeters, and he looks, uh, he looks uh, weak, he looks uh, very strange. He looks like a dwarf, not because just he's short, but he doesn't look positive and etheric. He looks uh, very, very different. I don't say he looks ugly. Uh, he looks dangerous when you meet him. <laughs> and uh, he's, he looks dark. Uh, his aura is not so shiny like in the photos. So there must be some... With Andrea we were just making fun that this is his magic, because when you see these photos and videos and then you come to him, you expect uh, him to look like that, and actually he looks different. And this is one thing, this uh, not so important. But what I want to speak about is that actually 
what people, why we are still so attracted to him. It's not his real physical look or any energy that you feel when you are near to him. Uh, maybe some, yes. Uh, it's more a certain very strong illusionary spiritual experience uh, which is which is open to you by which being I don't want to say but people who did yoga like me before they feel it the same well-known vibrations yes uh, those vibrations those experiences which we already know from meditation so it's very seducing very tempting and i was claiming everyone for years that that i have my own uh, personal uh, uh, yogic experience that bonjon is real uh, and no one can uh, no one can tell me convince me that it's not like that but here is here is the catch. Here is how we are entangled and seduced. So just imagine that uh, you want to seduce people in this age when yoga and spirituality and meditation became very fashionable. You cannot uh, seduce people by telling them uh, you are rich, you have palaces, you are politically powerful rarely works this what you can seduce people what what is humanity so hungry for now is a messiah is a person who can read your thoughts a person who can uh, speak in your mind a person who can make miracles heal your heal your family members i don't know what at the price yeah so why i didn't speak big about this uh, invisible powers and experiences before because I didn't want to use them as an argument, as a proof. I did use them as a proof when I was still a supporter of Bomjon because I was in a community online or physically of like-minded people who believed in, in invisible things, dreams, visions, voices. Uh, but when I became his victim and I realized who he actually he is and who his cult is, what is his cult about, then I choose not to use the invisible uh, inner arguments. And when I do it, like I did a few videos about my dreams, then I warn people that it is not proof this is my own dream like you have my videos about my dreams where i saw bomjon uh killing other people killing people <laughs> I, I had to be killed as well but somehow god let me survive so that i can speak and so another reason why i don't use these uh, invisible visions dreams and voices etc spiritual experiences about bomb john as an argument that he is dangerous and uh, you should be warned not to connect yourself with him it is because it would be as in many times uh, the followers of bomb john his pr machinery they would misuse it against me uh, immediately when i did the videos about my dreams there were comments that oh it's just a dream ah oh, come on you are mad you are crazy you are just uh, argumenting with your dreams so i know they are waiting they are waiting at the door and listening when will marichi tell something which they can misuse against discredit uh, against her and discredit her experience with Bomjun as a victim when will she do something when will she say something which will prove for the public that she's a witch, she's mentally ill, she's a secret agent of Vatican, etc. So yes, now I am giving you this tool in your hands, followers, but anyway, I must do these videos for those people who are reasonable and those people who can be saved from Bomjon still. 
And so, uh, on the other hand, Bom John's followers like Joan Stanley Baker, Andrea Good, and all these new followers whose names I don't even know, they always use the miracles as a propaganda. Ah, we, the victims who became his uh, whistleblowers, we are not allowed to use voices, dreams, uh, magical experiences, spiritual experiences, anything. We are not allowed, because we would be immediately attacked that it's not a proof, that it's just your, her experience and this, she is maybe mentally ill, mentally disturbed. Uh, it's not true. But who can have spiritual experiences? Who, who is allowed, who is entitled to have visions and uh, voices and music in their head? Them. They are allowed to, and they are even allowed to use it as an argument that Bom John is supposed to be divine. So this is a discrepancy, a logical discrepancy, but everyone knows that they are like that. It doesn't mean that uh, they will stop me telling the truth about Bom John. They are trying, but after all, it depends on the truth, and the truth will bubble out itself. I realized, even if I don't speak about it, it will come from that side or that, that side. Uh, the truth nature is to be revel revealed. This is the truth, Satya. So they can try. So for example, Bom John's followers are argumenting uh, recently. I will not speak about the old times because it's such a lot of material. Recently in the videos with Nepali media, why is he a divine being? How we know it? Because we have seen him flying on the horse to the sky. He has all these white horses which, he, which are mysteriously dying one after each other. And Ivan Stankovic wrote about the white horses on his website. Uh, they are killing these white horses, sacrificing them, or I don't know, torturing them to death. But the people, his followers, always gift him some new white horse. Because he's supposed to be the Maitreya or Kalki or who knows what, Messiah. And it's written in the books that he's supposed to have a white horse. So they always keep some white horses in his objects, in his places. But um, it doesn't matter that uh, uh, these white horses are killed and they always have to have new white horses for a lot of money, your donation money. But uh, there are these legends that he, people had seen him fly to the sky on the white horse. And then the Nepali media, the journalist is asking with the microphone, uh, the follower, did you see him? And he says, actually, me, I didn't see him, but that guy saw him. And so it's like that. So there are these miracles or the miracle why he made them. Uh, one, one night at three o'clock he ordered his followers to make a, a swimming pool at night. They have this machinery from the Chinese and the Taiwanese followers, rich, expensive mas machinery in the ashrams to make holes in the ground. Who knows why needs an ashram uh, to make holes? Uh, so at one night, uh, three o'clock at night, he decided to make a swimming pool and ordered his monks to dig. Uh, and I made the videos why he might have needed to hide some one bodies, corpses into those holes. And anyway, they did it. And the explanation was that tomorrow, tomorrow, some elephants are supposed to come and they will drink and bath in that swimming pool. So Bom John is uh, the lover of animals and nature, so they explain it like that. Yes, the elephants did come, but according to local people, the, the elephants had been stoned by Bom John's followers because they are, were so scared. The Nepalis are very scared of elephants because they destroy everything, the male elephants especially, but the females as well. Uh, so. The legends and the real stories are always opposite. And so they are entitled to use so-called miracles, many, many miracles uh, as a propaganda. But as soon as a victim of Bom John dares to say some 
mystical experience that Bonjon is uh, black, Bonjon is uh, harmful, then oh, they would immediately attack us. Oh, you are using proof which are not even proof, it's just your imagination, you are disturbed mentally, etc. So this is the long introduction. This is my long introduction. So let's go to the topic, uh, because I don't have much time on this video. So why is Bonjon called, uh, his company is called Bodhi Shravan Dharma Sangha? Uh, in the beginning, in 2011, he was telling, speaking a lot about very confusing things that he is from, he's remembering some past life where there were two sisters, one name was Bodhi Shravan and the other name was Dharma Sangha or something like that. Or uh, the other Mohima, yeah. The other name was Mahima, the other, uh, the first was Bodhi Shravan, and the Bodhi Shravan was the good sister and the Moh Mohina was the bad sister. Anyway, you know this story, you can find it out. It's uh, just more illusions to the story. Anyway, the Shravan. A shravan means uh, listening. Uh, in Buddhism, there are these shramners. These are the these are the followers of Buddha, the real Buddhism, who are listening to the teaching and who got the teaching, the lessons, the lectures by listening to them. Bonjon he was explaining why is Bodhi Shravan, why is his path called Bodhi Shravan. Dharma Sangha, he's changing it every year. Now it's Mahamaitriya, one other Guru Marg, Marga Guru. He's just playing around the words and changing every single year the name, not just of himself, but the name of his uh, Dharma, anti Dharma. Anyway, this Bodhisravan word is still uh, available in some form. Uh, around Bomjon's followers and uh, Shravan means listening. So he was explaining that his path is a is a path of listening to Bodhi, Bodhi's enlightenment. So er attaining enlightenment through listening. So yes, in the beginning it made sense to us, to me, Andrea Good and all the followers that yes, Bomjon was always claiming that the gods uh, gods, Buddhism usually don't speak about gods, but Bomjon speaks about gods who were teaching him. And that time he was telling Arya Tara, Arya Avalokiteshvara, the classical Buddhist divine beings, Bodhisattvas. Uh, he was using still these names. Uh, he doesn't use them anymore. It was just because he wanted to entangle the Buddhists from the Tamangs as soon as he has them in his hands, then he already doesn't use these classical Buddhist names because he doesn't need them. So these gods were telling him, teaching him. This was the, this was the mythology behind. So we believed it. So Arya Tara, Arya Valokiteshvara, Arya, this Arya that, and Jakpo, Dakpo, I don't know what. Uh, these Tibetan sounding names. And that's why Shravan. But uh, when you became, when we, many of us, we became followers of Bomjon, and we were still in our countries, Andrea in Japan, uh, some people in Germany, me in Europe, uh, Czech Republic, or some other people were in anywhere. We realized that he started to, that we were starting to hear things when we concentrated on Bomjon. Uh, you know, we supported...